Hey everybody, and thank you so much for kind of hanging out. I will... Hey, there I am. On screen. And uh, so hopefully you've come to the right place. If you're interested in the Rust programming language, um, one of its fundamental features above uh, its kind of peer languages is iterators. So if you think of a systems programming language, like C or C++ or, <laughs> you know, uh, they have this kind of, which I, you know, I don't mean this in a negative way really, but um, they might describe, might, might be sort of clunky. You have to take an integer, uh, as, you, as, you go, as, you, as you're going through an array, you need to start with an integer of zero, get process one element, increment that integer, and then, uh, access the next element and so on until you're at the end. Um, functional languages and uh, other programming communities uh, have something that's much more ergonomic and I would hope, uh, and one of the great things about Rust, as in particular as someone who was once a Python, or in fact still is a Python programmer, uh, <laughs> the, um, the iteration story in Rust is, is really, really cool. So. Um, this stream came to be after I was che checking out this um, relatively old blog post. I'll just chuck that in the chat. Um, and this blog post talks about some of the frustrations that beginners have, in particular around the difference between uh, the iter and inter iter traits so and now that i've posted the link i'll go to the rust playground so we can kind of flesh out what um, what the author's speaking about there so a few th oh there's a bit of junk here because i was playing around earlier i'll just this is some <laughs> advanced dark arts but we will uh, we'll get there we'll just delete all this stuff so don't worry about all this noise it's not really a problem oh what have I done? Apparently, the web browser just decides that it really doesn't like me today. Uh, okay, so I've got this vector of things. In fact, it's two, uh, there's two strings. In there and uh, the first thing that I think we might want to do is print each thing out so I can start with a for loop and if you have a little program Python this looks pretty natural get to this kind of macro -y stuff right here uh, but that's not too bad. So we've got this print line thing and the, I'll get rid of the at sign and just replace it with what it needs, which is a an exclamation mark. Sorry, my computer is quite laggy. So it's a bit difficult to type. I might close down a few things that are running in the background, like, like Spotify actually. Get rid of the background music and hopefully uh, free up some resources. So this iteration syntax is really convenient. We uh, we start out by you know we can print each line by uh, each element each of these strings and just just kind of just to kind of confirm what we might need to do. If we were in um, in C land, that doesn't have this notion of an iterator. So an iterator is a type that knows what iteration means, basically. So this might be something else. So So I might initialize an a, var a variable called i, 
which will stand for index. And then I'm just going to, we don't have the same syntax that we do in Rust as other languages. So I'm just going to do something slightly different, which is put in a loop. Uh, actually, will I? Yeah, I will. So this is um, actually far uglier than what C would give you, but um, <laughs> if we didn't have an iterator, this is what my th what things. Uh, so if i is greater than things len, so yeah, this is not what you have to do in C, but so it might be an unfair comparison. But if Rust didn't have iterators as a first class object or a first class type. Uh, trait. We might have to do things like this. If you know anything about Rust internals, you might know that the for loop actually looks a lot like this. Uh, now, oh, I need the actual thing. Okay, so just a second. The thing is things index i. Then I want to print it. We might encounter a problem with the borrow chicken <laughs> right now, um, because we are borrowing things left and center. Uh, have I got this right? So got an i. I need to increment i, otherwise I'm just going to go forever, and then. I need i plus equals 1. So this actually should have exactly the same result as what we had previously. <laughs> Except for the fact that we start at 0 uh, rather than uh, 1. So there are indeed, uh, so we need to a different comparison but there we go okay so we've done it without an a, a, a uh, we've gone through this things vector without a, an iterator so we can kind of the motivation here is that these iterators are great they save us a whole lot of syntactic uh, noise and they're quite easy to understand uh, and we can get the computer to figure out all these intermediate values But, but wait, there's more. <laughs> in Rust, if we, uh, if we have, let's say that we wanted to, we've actually got the second alternative. Rather than just for loops, we also have the ability to use higher order programming alongside our code. By the way, if you have any questions, a shout out. Uh, the chat is open in Twitch, and you're more than welcome to uh, to ask any questions as we're going along. I'm trying to go somewhat slowly, just to enable that. So feel free to um, <laughs> feel free to ask away if um, if this is kind of really confusing for you. Likewise, if I'm just going way, way, way too slow, because I'm uh, never it's never quite sure who's going to turn up with these things. Uh, let me know that and I can kind of rock on to some kind of slightly more advanced stuff. But if this is good, that's great. I will <laughs> just keep going. Okay, so what we've now covered is an iteration syntax that's down the bottom. And then if we didn't have the iteration syntax, that's the next commented out a block of code. Uh, what else did iterators provide us? And like, why do we care about them? Uh, let me copy across. Actually, I will maybe not do that. Let's type it out. Okay. So I would like a count of the bytes that are in each of my things. Each of uh, so I want to know how 
long it is. So one of the things that I can do is uh, use what's known as kind of the map produce paradigm. Quite famously deployed by uh, by Google and it wants to end uh, later uh, in an open source manner by Yahoo in the Hadoop project um, to enable distributed uh, <laughs> asynchronous programming that was massively horizontally scalable. Now, what I need to do, I need to call this ITER method. And there'll be another one that you may have encountered, which is into ITER. And this is when things start to kind of get a little bit irritating for the learning point of view. So, but let's just say that if I call this iter method, I get back a thing that knows what to do next, which is to iterate through what it's being, what the, what it's, <laughs> knows how to iterate through whatever is calling it. So in this case, things is calling the iter method. And so the iterator that it's returned knows how to uh, do the th whatever is required by iteration, which we will discover very shortly when we look at the trait itself. Traits, by the way, if you haven't uh, done much rust, uh, how types get their behavior in uh, now, here's some kind of crazy syntax. Let me kind of flesh this out. So what we want to do with map is apply a function to every single element of the iterator that it receives. So it's like, okay, here's a short story and here's very short. What I would like each of you to do, you, you know, because it's a very long list, uh, each of you to do, you, both of you, please provide me a sub iterator, like another one of the bytes that you have. And then I would like you to return the count, well, effectively the count, or the length of that internal iterator. So by the bytes method itself returns an iterator, which can be interpreted by the len method to provide like the total number of bytes per element of things. So things is a short story and uh, two, sh two short stanzas, and each of them will probably return uh, probably somewhere around, it looks, looks like about a 9 or a 10, uh, and an 8 or something. So, <coughs> uh, so now we have two integers. We had two, uh, two string slices, and now we have two integers. And now what we want to do is effectively take those integers and merge them together. So we can apply another higher order function. Um, if this bar syntax doesn't look familiar to you, uh, I can rewrite it slightly, but I'll push on until I get a query in the chat. Um, otherwise, I'll assume that you kind of know exactly what you're doing. <laughs> uh, let me carry on. So fold. Um, we start with... Uh, so fold takes something called, which is normally called an accumulator, but we're going to call it subtotal. So the subtotal is like a temporary value uh, of the number of bytes that we've already seen. So if this was a list of 5,000 different vectors, it would get very large very quickly. In this case, it's got two, so it's not, um, not huge. Uh, this zero is the initial state of the subtotal, which is the first uh, and then we want to add subtotal. Uh, we want to like sum it all up so that it um, so that the bytes, which is an integer, is, is carried through. Um, Rust will take care of the rest of the logic to make sure that we. Uh, we never go, we, we never exceed the bounds of, of the, the thing that we're counting. Uh, we try and do it in a very optimal manner. I'm pretty sure I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if this was a very large list and we had types that we knew about, we could probably get some auto vectorization going as well. Um, the Rust compiler is, um, is pretty, pretty nifty. And these iterators, these iterator methods are 
very amenable to optimization. That is, if we use the iteration methods rather than the for loop syntax, these higher order functions really enable code to get very heavily uh, <clears throat> optimized. Okay, yay, 25. Okay, so I was pretty off with um, my counts, my estimates. <laughs> like, so we, uh, um, right, so then it's not 11 and 8, it's you know, 6 more than that. So, uh, what have we gone through so far? We've got uh, our, we've got what an iterator is, so the for loop. If we had to desugar it, we would have to go through this really horrible mess of starting with this integer and kind of going all the way through it. And now we've said that if we use iterators efficient, uh, sorry, idiomatically, Rust can actually compile really, really efficient code. Uh, and that's great for uh, me as kind of an everyday ordinary programmer. <laughs> because, um, I like knowing that my code is efficient and so forth. Uh, it, it feels nice. So. Um, the syntax I want to sort of skim through slightly very quickly, but um, just to point out because it, it is unfamiliar. If you haven't used lambda functions or anonymous functions before, if you've used say JavaScript or what have you, um, they may be very familiar to you. Uh, Rust creates a function that takes its arguments in these bars. And then the next expression is the body of the function, if it's a single expression, and, and if it's multiple, oh, in fact, it just has a single, technically it only has a single expression. Or, uh, if you need more than that, you can actually wrap uh, thing.bytes.len inside curly braces as well, and you will, um, off to the, <laughs> stupid Terry will be off to the races. Now, um, I want to do something else, which is actually count the number of words. And I am sort of bringing this up because string processing is kind of a, a near and dear to my heart. I spent a long time in the Python world in, data, in the data science community, and I did a lot of natural language processing. Uh, okay, what have we got? Okay. <clears throat> okay, so. Ah, this is actually in a, I'm going to, this is an intentional hiccup. So, what do we do here? We've, this white space thing, actually, if you look into the method, uh, it doesn't return the same type of iterator than what we had with the bytes. So it doesn't have a link method. It doesn't really know, it doesn't, it's not really defined for whatever split white space defines, well, it returns. So we need. So what we need, what we want, is a collect thing, and we add a collect method, which will kind of consume whatever split white space spits out, and then uh, provide us like a vector of that, and then we will be able to count the uh, the words. So let's try that. Probably didn't need to delete that straight away, and naturally I've got a typo. So I uh, will fix that. There's like a three second delay between typing and um, anything actually appearing on my computer. Now this might blow up as well. Okay, and the reason why it's gonna blow up is kind of obscure. Uh, we get to be very introduced to our, my, my favorite, part of Rust science syntax, which is TurboFish. TurboFish is great. Uh, now, what it's saying is that it doesn't know <clears throat> uh, how to collect whatever split white space is returning. Uh, now, I can look into the the, we get a couple of type hits and so forth, and uh, right. So it's like actually, what you should do is add this TurboFish syntax. So we've got these um, columns here, and then curly, oh sorry, angle braces, and then B is a type. Uh, 
Now who knows what byte B stands for? I don't in this case, but uh, let's try that. So just to, uh, so if it's not super obvious, which if you're new to Rust, it might not be, B is not concrete. If we put B in there, as it says that we should, and which I'm probably have done about 17 times. Uh, it's, <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> uh, we can fix this. We can. We can. Uh, what we actually want is this. We can. Uh, what we want is a vector, and I actually know what goes inside. But I want to show you and kind of give you another trick in your Rust toolbox. Is that? Collect actually just wants to confirm that you want a vector. It can figure out what goes in the middle, like the items are. So we can often get away with just doing vec there, and then we kind of add an underscore to indicate to Rust that it should just figure that out itself. This isn't going to work in every single instance, but in this case, he says, it does work. Yay! We can now <laughs> we can now count words in Rust using highly efficient iterators. Da -da 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 -da. Fantastic! Yay! Hooray for us! That's perfect. Now, there's a but, uh, and that is this thing. Sometimes it's really annoying when you're trying to learn this language, and sometimes you're told to call it. A and sometimes you're told by the compiler that uh, you'll get these kind of weird error messages and it will say, oh, I recommend, inter, you know, try this. <clears throat> right, into error. And you're like, well, I, okay. And now things kind of worked, maybe, sort of. Well, they, uh, and then you kind of get further and you kind of jump around and forget exactly what, what each other is doing. So um, I would like to go into the uh, standard library documentation and kind of flesh it out a little bit. Um, but here's the actually here's what I highlighted earlier. Uh, if you look at into iter, uh, it's described in this like it's talking to people that already should know. Like it's not really descriptive if you don't already wouldn't the person who needs this documentation doesn't need that documentation, right? Like so the the people people who no Rust wouldn't need to go into the docs to see which iterates over T. And uh, I, what I'm trying to say is that beginners uh, don't need to. I'm here to help with this particular what like how to interpret these three lines. Uh, and what I want to say is that iter iterates over a reference to a given type. So in our case earlier, we had this vec thing, uh, and it returns a read-only reference to that collection of strings, string slices to be more technically correct. It mute iterates over a read-write access to the collection itself. It enables us to modify or mutate the values inside the collection as we're going through it, I believe, but not the actual size of the collection itself. That's, I'm going to have to kind of double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Uh, <laughs> he says, okay. oh, I need the expert buddy. <laughs> like, what? what? I need a refund for this <laughs> like this is rubbish. Okay, and into it the last one. And this is actually the sneakiest one because it doesn't quite indicate the significance. Into it which iterates over T. Right, so that's a mess. <laughs> Iterating over T implies that it iterates over it actually takes ownership of the type T, so it's a collection type and then iterates over it. The significance of that is that into iter will also destroy t once it's finished iterating, because that's the behavior of something that is the owner. Once the owner goes out of scope, it will blow up <laughs> in your face. 
<laughs> so if you're a beginner and you've been confused by this, I totally appreciate where you're coming from and I want you to know that it's fine. Right, so again, just to reiterate again once more, iter iterates over a reference to a collection type. Iter mute iterates over a read write or a mutable reference to our type into iter, which is the one that I always go for the first word for whatever reason. Actually, is the most powerful. It has a subtle behavior where the collection is not expected to last after the iterate has finished with it because it will uh, it'll it'll destroy it. So let's have a go at uh, actually I'm I'm gonna sort of have a very very quick pause and just allow anyone to ask any questions that they may have. Uh, we haven't had a lot of chat feedback, um, but you know that's one of the unique things about uh, about being on a live stream is that you know I'm here to answer any questions so if you do have any just just kind of fill them in on the chat uh, I think it's twitch tv slash Tim clicks and uh, and I'm I'm I'm, the, I'm there <laughs> now if you don't want to just send me a tweet or you know send me a dm or send me some hate mail hopefully not with blood uh, but <laughs> where are we going with this I don't I, I have no idea. Okay, so iteration. <laughs> so to iterate over something, uh, we actually don't need to do a great deal. So iterator, to become an iterator, all we need to define is a next method. And we need to return some type, which becomes so uh it's that item so if i was iterating over a collection of vectors uh, that contain strings which was our original example the type item would be uh would be a string or in vector string slice but what if we want to uh, but if we can implement into iterator, we actually get the for loop syntax up for free. And this is something that was it's kind of useful. I you know if we go back, I'll go back to the very start and talk about the difference between you know kind of 14 things was pretty trivial. We can actually give consumers of our library that kind of interface. Whereas if we didn't have iterators and they needed to, they would need to do something like finding some index and like, we don't want them to vomit over their code in order to actually use our API. So um, if we can implement these into methods, which effectively provide conversions between one type and another, then our lives are going to be much friendlier. Uh, well, at least our consumers' lives are going to be a lot happier. So, oh, oh, here we are. <laughs> hey, Dio Twitch. So I just, uh, I just saw you know it. Hey, I'm not quite a beginner, but it's cool to see other Rust programmers write code. Lambda functions kind of freak me out, and you know, me too. But thanks for the examples. So um, yeah, they do, right? So um, so one of the sad things about these really efficient uh, uh, <laughs> things is that, you know, this map and fold and higher order function, it's nonsense. I mean, it's absolute bonkers. What well, we've got an editor thing here. Well, actually, this one is not legal. It probably would still work. Um, we're not doing anything with our things afterwards, but uh, you know we've got this thing. It, it itself has iterators inside it, and uh, yeah, it sucks. Uh, so if I just actually, I'll just do a very very small shout out to Rust in Action. Um, so you, ding. Uh, one of the things that I've tried to do in my book is to really avoid higher order functions and higher order programming 
uh, even though I personally prefer it. So the uh, and the the reason why is that if you're a Java programmer, this thing this makes no sense. This kind of thinking is is like ridiculous. And I want people to come to Rust in Action and say, look, I've got a bit of rusty old Perl or whatever I've got. Like that's my programming arsenal. I don't want to be intimidated by this crazy syntax, but uh, I do would like, you know, like, as you say in your next comment, <laughs> that, uh, you know, we all kind of know that this is the right way to do Rust programming and uh, that does enable uh, some really, really amazing um, op optimization. So there was this really cool thing posted to the Rust subreddit, which was about a single instruction, multiple data, SIMD, um, auto vectorization of code. And what it kind of said to me was, and I could hunt around for it, but my computer will probably blow up if I, because um, it's really cooking right now. Uh, <coughs> the um, Yeah, just, just how incredible it is. Uh, actually, so uh, we were going to implement an iterator, but I might actually push stop because uh, I wanted to just just do half an hour regularly. I'm going to be doing uh, these types of things probably a couple of times a week. Uh, on this time, uh, 9 a.m. my time, or probably about 8 a.m. my time, which is 13 hours ago. And it's now 9.30 p.m. where I am. So I'm based in New Zealand. Uh, we're, uh, so hopefully we can catch a bunch of, uh, a bunch of exciting, interesting uh, programmers. And um, I really want to introduce more people to Rust. I think it's a very exciting programming language. I also uh, want to enable you to uh, provide any feedback that you'd like, because this is kind of the start of my streaming journey. And uh, I would I would love to be a, um, a, a, a resource that you can draw from. So you can reach me on the Twitters and the, uh, so I guess it's the same nickname, Tim Clicks uh, is, I'm basically everywhere. And uh, if you've got any feedbacks, on this particular session, any follow-up questions, or you're like, hey, hey, this McNamara guy, could you please help me out with my crazy Rust program? Uh, give me the program. I'll try and I'll digest it, and maybe we will, um, <laughs> maybe we will get, uh, we'll get to another stream. I'm really hoping to kind of pick up a regular cadence, and so any advice or anything like that is, is very deeply appreciated. Uh, and I, with that, I will, I'll see you later. I'm to see you online. I will be hanging out. Uh, I won't close off the, uh, I won't close off the chat straight away. Um, but I'm going to go grab a cup of tea, I think. <laughs> it's been, um, oh, it's really wonderful to see everyone's positive uh, comments. It's been, it was so ridiculously nerve wracking setting this whole thing up. You no idea how utterly, even the plants, the plants took a good 20 minutes. Uh, <laughs> so it is, uh, it, it's been really, really great seeing, um, even the five of us here hanging out, I think is perfectly sufficient. And uh, I, I look forward to many more chats. Okay, thanks all. <laughs>